I'm Greg Alton, and I'm on this episode of Order Fire. Hey y'all, welcome to Order Fire. Today I'm sitting down with my good buddy Greg Alton from Pinky's West Side Grill. I'm excited to talk to Greg today. Uh, Greg's actually one of the reasons why I stayed in Charlotte when I discovered Plaza Midwood. Um, at that point, he was the man behind the magic of the Penguin, um, and that's transferred now into two great locations in Charlotte which as any chef and or business owner can tell you is no small feat. Greg Outen remembers his first cooking experiences while helping his dad cook barbecue as a small child. He has worked in fine dining, fast food, catering, and he even owned a hot dog cart. Greg opened Pinky's West Side Grill in 2010, converting the space from an old Volkswagen garage to the fun eatery it is today, even keeping the iconic VW Bug on the roof of the building. While Greg and the Penguin were on diners, drive-ins, and dives in Season 1 in 2007, a more recent 2015 episode had Guy cooking with Greg again, indulging in a Triple G Pinky's Burger and Corn Dog Shrimp, the burger's namesake for the building it's made in, Triple G Automotive Repair. For now, Greg and his partners have opened a second Pinky's location in Huntersville, but who knows what this famous Charlotte native has up his sleeve next. Greg, thanks for coming out today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, busy life schedule to uh, come and sit down and talk to me about what uh, what your take is on the way things are in Charlotte. My pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me. First thing I want to ask you, so you've opened up a second location for Pinkies. Yes. Um, and that's how many years apart? Uh, let's see, three years apart. In our third year, we started working on the second location. So for people that don't know, usually it takes three years to establish a restaurant. Um, so to open the second one is a, what I'd call a forward-leaning stance. Well, the main drive, I guess, was my partner, Dave. He, uh, he gets antsy really quick. Uh, and we were doing good over there, Freedom Moorhead. And, uh, you know, we just said uh, we found a, a spot that was really cool. And, uh, you know, we said, all right, you know, it's, there's only money to lose, which, you know, knock on wood, <laughs> we didn't. We're doing pretty good now. But... Uh, you know, I, I, I really like to go forward in things and, and uh, you know, really try to turn on different areas to, to what we've created there. Uh, your particular food philosophy um, is one of my favorites. I come from a really big family, and by big, I mean three and four hundred pounders. I mean, <laughs> everything we did, we sat around and ate. You know, uh -huh. everything was, was centered around food. And uh, uh, my dad was a fireman, so, I mean, it was whatever whoever killed what is what they ate you know so mm -hmm. I learned a lot of things there uh, you know just using simple things and making them really good uh, that, that's you know that's how the, my philosophy of the burgers there came about you know just throwing a five ounce ball of ground beef on the flat top let it cook flip it smash it and then you know let it finish and uh, but you know my, my philosophy of food is pretty simple uh, except when I get in these moods and I'm just like, all right, well, let's see, this works really good on a plate. Let's see how it'll do on a sandwich. Now, going back to the penguin stuff, uh, that, uh, let's see, that's been mm, about 14, 15 years ago that, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I love hot rods, I love motorcycles, you know, heavy metal music, uh, you, know, you know, loud and fast, <laughs> man, that's, that's the way it goes, you know. When we started naming things, I was like, all right, well, it just makes sense, you know, we've got a small block, big block, and then a full-blown full Emmy, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, that all just came, uh, came about of just sitting around thinking, all right, what do we want this place to be? And with it being, going back towards the Penguin, and the Penguin had all of those old school hot rod days, and, you know, everybody had a cool car, and mm -hmm. they'd pull up and show it off, and, uh, you know, and those were the stories we got from the family when we took it over. So, that's kind of where all that stuff came from. I mean, you know, that place had, I would say, the biggest following in Charlotte that I've seen. But it was also a place that it was actually at that point was the only place that I could guarantee to meet other chefs. So this new generation of chefs that are running like the finer dining joints, the guys that are getting the press um, and whatnot are, are well connected, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether through social media, um, through the guild, getting together. Um, when I moved down from New York, that was the one thing that I noticed was like, I'm so used to having chefs around on a regular basis. And, you know, um, Charlotte at that point, when I got here, so it was about 12 years ago, 11 years ago, 
was pockets. Mm -hmm. And you know, the only time, the only place that I was guaranteed to run into other cooks, other chefs, was always at the Penguin. Yeah. To me, as a cook, as a chef, um, it, that is probably the highest accolade, I think. Obviously, you know, getting press and, and winning awards is wonderful and it's great for the business and it strokes your ego. But man, knowing that the guys that are in the trenches and their joints want to come on their time off and spend their money, I think, is one of the highest honors. So I think that, I think that speaks well to um, not only to what the Penguin was in the Mystique, but also the food, because it wasn't like we just went in there to drink. Right. We actually ate. Pretty, you were working on Pinky's. Actually, you were, were you, you were done with the Penguin at that time when you started working on Pinky's, or you were on your way out well, at that point, right? We, uh, we had originally set it up. It was uh, Brian and Jimmy were going to be involved as well, and we were thinking of, you know, well, we could make it a Penguin, but, you know, at the time we, we were kind of up in arms over what our future was mm -hmm. as far as the trademark and all that stuff. I mean, we had a, a, a deal with Mr. Ballantyne, Mr. and Miss Ballantyne, but uh, you know, we didn't know where it was going to go uh, with the kids. You know, we were kind of thinking, uh, you know, what's what's our future going to be if all of a sudden they want us out? You know, right. we don't get a deal. So uh, I just kind of uh, I talked to everybody concerned, and at that point, we had brought in my partners now, Andy Cobble and Dave Rames, and uh, we were thinking about, you know, what do we do? And and, and Jimmy goes, uh, well, why don't we just call it Pinkies? And we all were like, where does the name come from? That sounds pretty good. I, I don't know. Okay, I was curious. <laughs> we I were, never asked that question you know, all the time. I just assumed it was something. Well, you know, it's uh, it's funny because uh, <laughs> Jimmy would say, you know, gosh, my biggest fear with you leaving is I'm going to turn around and there's going to be Pinkies on every corner now. You know, and I was like, <laughs> we went to open the second one. I'm like, sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I was... Uh, I told the guys, I said, look, you know, y'all may stand a better chance of getting a deal uh, with just the two of you because they had already told us they wanted merchandising and, you know, royalties, things like that. So, you know, I got to thinking, I was like, well, you know, what if us three go over here and y'all two stay here, no hard feelings, and, and everything was great, you know, and that's, uh, that's uh, the way it was meant to be. And then, you know, like, a little, as you know, you know, a lot of other parties got involved, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, but, and by the way, thank you for uh, saying uh, about all the chefs coming in, because that, that was one of my the things I was most proud of is, you know, I could look out and, you know, there were guys at uh, restaurateurs, uh, chefs, purveyors, you know, uh, all out in the, in the dining room, and that, that was one of the main things that I was... Uh, so proud of because you know if you can get chefs to sit down and eat and and uh you know drink a beer and or hold down the liar's corner which you were a pretty good staple of over there i love miss the liar's corner Here's yeah the li liar's corner was that was good stuff so you guys i mean you guys put back sweat equity into getting the penguin opened up and then turn mm -hmm. around and you did the same thing with with pinkies and on top of it had the zoning issues and everything else right oh yeah and almost lost the bug on the roof if i don't if i remember correctly yeah yeah we that uh that was a two-year battle with the city i mean we uh we had to prove that it was a landmark we got landmark status and uh that the volkswagen was the right? volkswagen <laughs> yeah as yeah. a volkswagen man i can't tell you how hey, happy i was at the yes, state me too yeah and you know the thing i found out is everybody has a volkswagen story I mean, it's, it's almost like every single person has owned a Volkswagen at one time or another. Yeah. You get you get pinkies going, and you honestly could have I mean, you could have mailed in the menu at that point. Yeah, you know, and people would have been like, "Oh, well, it's this." Um, but it's what I I think what I love about the menu of pinkies, and, and same reason, or, and everything that I love about the Penguin one is it's 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 a, it's a signature voice. I could have walked into Pinkies without even knowing you were involved and probably would have guessed either A, somebody ripped you off really good um, because it wasn't the menu from, from the Penguin, but it had the same, it evoked the same sense of humor. Um, mm -hmm. The flavors are bold, well balanced, um, and it's hard to choose. Like, like anytime I've been there, I was like, I don't know, I want a hot dog, which way do I want it? Do I want a burger? Which way do I want it? So what's been, the, what's been the surprise take at, at, at Pinky's? Like, what has been the one thing that you put out there? It's like, eh, we'll see. And uh, now you can't take it off the menu if you wanted to. Uh, the white trash burger 
uh, with the fried pickles, onion, fried onion rings, and spicy ranch, provolone cheese. Uh, I, I had a feeling that would do well, and I was a little nervous about the ding dong chicken just being number one because of the name, you know. But it's funny, you know, we have some people that, that come in, they don't want to say white trash. They'll be like, can I get the trash burger, you know? Or, but, and the ding dong chicken, uh, you know, uh, there again, my, my love for Thai food and, and you know, using uh, Asian ingredients and things. I was sitting at home one night, I, I don't even know what I was doing. I, I, I guess I was working on the menu and I, I was like, all right, well, what if we put uh, some crunchy peanut butter, uh, honey cilantro slaw, and sriracha on this chicken sandwich and just put it on a bun. And then uh, my wife's birthday was coming up a couple weeks later, so uh, we threw her a party. And so I made some and people were just like, wow. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. and it, and as soon as it hit the menu, uh, people were wanting to order the burger at it, Ding Dong style. And now we have people wanting to do the hot dogs Ding Dong style, which uh, it, it's fantastic. If you've, ever, if you've never had a Nathan's Beef hot dog, crunchy peanut butter, honey cilantro slaw, and sriracha sauce, that's good. So now you're native Charlottesian. Mm -hmm. um, Been here all my life. And you've been, all right, so you've done, obviously you've had the Penguin, you've had Pinkies, you were involved with the family restaurant prior to that. So you've been on the mm -hmm. scene a few months, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, I never broke it down into months. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'd want My dad used to have uh, uh, like a uh, carnival food stand at the, when we would get the fair here. I, I think I remember I was like five and I, I he let me put burgers on the grill, you know, and I, I think I was standing on a pickle bucket and flipping them, you know, and here's these carnies waiting on breakfast and, you know, I'm making sausage patties and stuff and they're waiting and they like reach their hand in and I'm like, is that a glove or is his hand just that dirty? And as it turns <laughs> out, it was their, their hands were just that dirty, you know, so. But uh, that's really the first uh, memories of cooking. Uh, that I have is because my dad, being a fireman, mm -hmm. he had so many side jobs. One of them was cooking barbecue. I did that for years. I was a guy that would have to do the, get the corn ready, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that, and flip the meat, and you know. And I, I remember doing that back to you know, 10, 12 years old. But right. I've just I've always cooked, and uh, you know, I, I think that's where I get all of that stuff. Was there ever was there was there a point like after high school or you're like, I'm gonna go off to college to be an architect or was there, did, or did you just stay you know, right on through? Right, right, out of, right out of high school, I was kind of confused. I, I was, like I say, you know, my dad being a fireman and my brother went into the fire department. I actually went and took the test and uh, I started talking to my dad after I took the test and all. And uh, you know, of course, my brother's four years older than me. He's the ultimate big brother. He's like, well, you know, you're gonna have to get up out of, out of a dead sleep and go scrape a body up off the highway. And so at that point, I so was really like- So really not too different from what we do nowadays. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, you know, I was like, well, I don't know. Let me think about that, you know. And then I, I realized, I was like, well, you know, I've always really, they're pretty good at cooking. And uh, so I went to Central Piedmont and, uh, for about a year and it was really, I was really trying to get a degree. At, at the time, they had a really nice hospitality program. And, uh, you know, if I'm going to do this, I want to try to learn every aspect of it. So I went to bartending school, which really didn't learn anything, didn't really help me anything. It cost me about 400 bucks. But, you know, I had a card that said I was a licensed mixologist. So yeah, take that, Bob Peters. <laughs> but, uh, but that was like 1980s. I think 1987 but uh, you know then I, I started getting more into cooking and uh, you know the rest is kind of history I, I really did about every kind of my first restaurant management was a place called Taco Loco there was one on South Boulevard mm -hmm. and one on Freedom Drive and they were like fast food Mexican uh, it was a good experience I mean I learned a lot uh, I hired a young Heavy metal musician with long black hair named Dave Rames. That's where I uh, ran into Dave. So you guys have been together that long? Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's uh, he was 15 years old then, and I was uh, probably let's see, I'm seven years older than him. So yeah, I was 22, I guess. And uh, so you know, of course, he 
stole beer and ran out the back one night and, you know, never saw him for a couple years later, you know. But then uh, I bought a hot dog cart and did that for about four years. And uh, we made some money, we lost some money. Uh, i tell you, this is my luck. The year uh, Hurricane Hugo came through, it was my first festival in the park. I was excited. I had all this bratwurst and smoked sausage and, and beef hot dogs. I was like, man, we're going to ton it. We're going to make a killing. And then they're like, whoop, there's a hurricane coming to Charlotte. Like, Hurricanes don't come to Charlotte. <laughs> so I have my card out there in Freedom Park. Uh, a lot of those tents and things, you know, these people that travel the circuits and do these things, you know. Well, my hot dog cart was here, and there was trees all around it. it didn't get touched. A lot of stuff got smashed and tore up, but uh, I kind of took that as a sign to keep on with the hot dog cart, but stay out of the big festivals and stuff. Right. And I did, I did a lot better if I concentrating on, because I was kind of in the first wave of the guys that were were street vendors. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, do you still do do you still do barbecue for cater outs and all that? Yeah, or? yeah. Once in a while, I'll get you know somebody wanting to feed couple hundred people and I always uh, I work close with the uh, the uh, pink house up here on Moorhead uh, and I cook uh, barbecue for them a couple times a year so uh, you know I I, uh, I try to give back as well as as uh, you know try to do whatever people want catered you know I mean it's uh, you never know when you know some things might slow down and you need the catering right. I mean as much as I would like to not cook outside at 95 degrees and 100% humidity, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you get, you kind of have to. And it's a, now, are you do you just do butts or do you do whole hogs? I do both. Uh, are you tomato or vinegar? <laughs> I uh, am more vinegar, but I like tomato. I, I and I actually like South Carolina, Carolina mustard stuff. I mean, I, I'm a I have the same take on barbecue sauce as I do like coleslaw. Uh, you know, there's a million different ways, and barbecue as well. There's a million different ways. I don't think any of them are really bad. Not saying that I hadn't had bad barbecue. I've had bad barbecue, God, but one of the worst things in the world when that happens. Oh man, it's yeah. I am a coleslaw slut. Like, Me too. I, when it, I love good coleslaw because I mean, you can cabbage and vinegar together. It doesn't matter if it's. Oh, it's it best. doesn't matter if you go with sauerkraut, which doesn't necessarily have vinegar in it, but it's got that crunch to it. Mm -hmm. Or if you're looking at like a hot fried cabbage where you got a little bit of vinegar in it, to me those two have to be together. Well, coleslaw is the same thing. There's nothing more disappointing than just getting some mayonnaise yes. and some cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> I you really, don't do that with yours. No, nah, no. Nah, I, I, uh, yeah, I like to put you know a lot of different components, and uh, I use the basic uh, as far as just like for hamburgers and hot dogs. Uh, our southern slaw, I just use basically my grandmother's recipe. Uh, you know, and it's very simple: just a little sugar, mayonnaise, uh, apple cider vinegar, salt and pepper. You know, and I, yeah, what you else? Know? Yeah, I mean that is my basic slaw. It's got to be apple cider vinegar. Like, oh yeah. I don't yeah. like when I get the white distilled, it's too sharp. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just, it's too it's much all, of a yeah. bite. And yeah. it's all acid. I think the cider vinegar gives a nice, uh, deeper balance to mm -hmm. it when I'm getting Now, what about red slaw? You like the red barbecue the slaw? Lexington slaw, yeah. I love I do that. too, yeah. I've, I've yeah. done it a few times here. Um, and I like it too because I don't normally chop my slaw. Mm -hmm. So whenever I feel like I'm getting kind of bored or I need, like, I'll just throw that out there because it's one of those things. Some people are music people in the kitchen. They mm -hmm. allow it. Some people are not music people in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. or they are, you know what I mean? It's either they are or they're not. I know your kitchens are wide open and the music's always at the right volume or louder mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in your restaurants. So I know that you do have music in your kitchen whether you like it or not. Yes. Do you like music in your kitchen? Oh yes, love it, love it. I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, for me it was always kind of a focus thing. You know, uh, you, you've got that back, rhythm and you can just keep that rhythm you know you're reading tickets you know what i mean that's just for me uh along with my ocd add all that <laughs> stuff that chefs cooks have you know it it just seemed to make a better flow you i'm, know? And, I'm uh, exactly the same way which is why i've always loved it what's your preference as far as like you know when you're in the kitchen and you're in the like you're in the weeds or not even necessarily the weeds, but it's just, it's, it's hitting heavy and you're working the line, whether you're expediting or cooking, what do you like to have on? Uh, I think my choice is always going to be like old metal, you know, anything. I mean, it, it can be, even be hair metal, uh, 
you know, death metal, it doesn't matter, you know, this is loud, fast, you know, just, da -da -da -da, just makes you want to run and, mm -hmm. and work harder and get it out. Uh, but then I've worked places, you know, where we could listen to funk all night or something, you know, or R&B. Kind of just depends on, you know, how it is, how the kitchen's going. You know, it's one of those things where you kind of feel out the mood of the kitchen and you can kind of tell, all right, well, this is going to be a funk night. This was, you know, everybody's going to be dancing around or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. or, but my preference, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time is give me something that's, you know, just going to kick you right in the ass and get you through service and get you to the bar when it's all over with and you're still sitting there <coughs> like, yeah, I'm still going for service, you know, because, you know, it's, it's hard to come down. So you might as well have that soundtrack going on in your head, you know. I would, you have a rock and roll background? <laughs> Were you I, actually, yeah, I, I uh, grew up playing drums and uh, did a few. Uh, I didn't actually. I didn't know that when I was because I'm a drummer as well, really? so I didn't oh, know that when I was pitching it. All right. I get on so many people's nerves because I, you know, I get Constantly carried away, tapping. you know, and then people are like, uh, uh, you know, and my dad would just come and smack the table, you know. Yep. I don't know. I guess maybe I seek the tension that way. So or I don't know. You know, so you, you tend to compensate, you know, when you grow up bigger and and you're not the real suave guy over there talking to the girls. At uh, least you weren't the bass player. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> bass player is always third runner up. Yes, exactly. If you could come back as any country and western star, living or dead, who would it be? Mm. Uh, Waylon Jennings. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> He is really, uh, he's really added on all of a sudden. I've seen all kinds of cooks lately. I think it's yeah. awesome that people have picked on is much further than just country music or the oh, Duke yeah. boys. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Perfect. there's so much more to him, you know, you know. You'd be tough and sensitive. Yeah, oh yeah, man, it, you know, it, his, his music uh, is timeless, you know, it's still, it, you, all of these hardcore rockers, man, they respect the hell out of him and it's not just because of all the drugs they can do. Which I love too because, like, outside of the drugs, everybody assumed that he was a big drinker, which he was not a drinker right. at all. Right. Um, that kind of blew my mind because I really expected just based on the songs yeah. he had covered that oh, yeah. you know that would be it. No, mm -hmm. that wasn't the gig. Yeah, I um, learned that as well. So I guess, like, all right, let's stick on the Waylon theme since I've got a you know a like fan in the house. What's the greatest Waylon Jennings songs ever sung? Not necessarily mm. written because he's covered a lot right, of fantastic right. songs. Uh, wow. Lukenbach, Texas. And he would always say in concert, you know, I don't, uh, I've never been to Lukenbach, Texas. I don't know where the hell Lukenbach, Texas is, but we've made a hell of a lot of money off of this song, so I'm going to sing it for you. <laughs> and it's, uh, well, I think the concept of Lukenbach is great because it doesn't really exist. Right. But it does, so I think it's everybody wants that spot. Oh yeah, yeah and it's, it's funny because every person that I've talked to, I mean, if you're a Whalen fan, you gotta love. I mean, the, the concept, but it means something different to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a similarity because obviously it's a place where nobody really lives. Yeah, but everybody's view on it is always just a little bit different because you get to put yourself into it. It, rem it reminds me of my parents also because they went through kind of a, I guess like everybody else's parents back in the '70s went through kind of an urban cowboy phase, you know, we had a jukebox mm -hmm. and of course there was some Waylon and Willie and, uh, you know, all that stuff on there. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I could also say David Allen Coe, but that's just, that's, that's a, a whole, whole different, di that's a whole different, you know, for different reasons. That's just, that's for when the bad mood stuff kicks in. Yep. You know? That and the motorcycle show up. Yep. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yep. When do you know, that you've achieved success? Mm. Well, uh, I, I used to look at it a, a whole different way. Uh, but me and my father was so different when I was growing up. Uh, you know, he was more regimented on the fire department. Really, uh, he was a registered Democrat, but he was pretty conservative. Uh, so I remember when I was 15, I had the Ramones that's alive on just cranked up in my bedroom <laughs> and him. And of course my older brother, they bust down my door and my dad cranks a chainsaw and he's like, I'm not telling you again to turn that down. You know, what really defined it was when he told me he was proud of me for, for what I was doing, what I've done. Uh, and it wasn't, uh, 
because of being on TV and all that stuff. It's, it, it was the fact that I could open something, maintain it, and uh, have people respect me for what I did and have a lot of people love what we did. And uh, before he died, uh, he, he really let that be known a lot. And that, That's awesome. to me, is what defines success in my career. I, I think every... I think every son wants that from their father anyways. Yes. Um, yes. So Definitely. to get it is, uh, I think is a validation for sure. Yeah. And well deserved. So, uh, besides all the awesome food and rock and roll and things that you brought into my life, here's another reason why I love Greg. So you're doing this thing with pinkies for pit bulls. Yes. Um, I'm also a bully breed rescue owner. I have a, uh, I have a boxer pit bull American Bulldog and maybe Massive Breed, we're not sure. One of the greatest dogs I've ever owned and my first in the bully breed and yeah. hopefully my last because he stays forever, but definitely if not. <laughs> um, That's, you'd like to thank that, you a, really a, do. A much, a, a much maligned breed. Um, tell me a little about, about why and what you got going on, man. Well, uh, I was uh, in California in January and uh, our my daughter's uh, Pitbull slash Black Lab had uh, gotten sick. She was having liver failure. Uh, and by the time we made it back to Charlotte, uh, my wife Candy made it to the vet and was able to say bye to her. And I, I never got a chance myself. And, uh, you know, so it kind of, it was really heartbreaking. And uh, I can always see the Pitbull side in her because, I, you know, this is the way I see Pitbulls. I mean, it, they're always just, running and goofy and their tongues hanging out you know they just want to hug and love and and that's the that's the side i saw of her that, that mm -hmm. i could see the pit bull coming out and uh so when it was time to get a new dog uh we'd always talked about getting a, a full breed pit and uh you know i realized there's a lot of uh, stigmas and people's personal opinions and and things but you know if you really look at the data uh they're not even close to the top three aggressive dogs. No. I mean, uh, you know, you got the top three aggressive dogs are, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Cocker Spaniels, Chihuahuas, and uh, Dachshunds. <laughs> yeah. And which, Those growing Chihuahuas up. Chihuahuas are nasty. Oh man, I grew up with, <laughs> with Chihuahuas and uh, Dachshunds, so I know all about that. But uh, there's so many of them that are, uh, you know, for what, what reason, you know, people can't handle them or whatever. You know, they just get tossed out, and it's just a very misunderstood breed that uh, if you ever had one and sat on the couch and have one come running up to you just goofy like this picture here, <laughs> you know, and all it wants is love, you know. It just wants to, and they give the best kisses and hugs, and, you know, so uh, I said, I thought to myself, you know, uh, we're going to adopt one, and then I'm just going to start, because I never really have had a, a cause mm -hmm. and always wanted to have a cause and this is a great cause because they're you know the numbers of how many get put down a year just because people want to adopt them uh, and ones that have been on adoptable lists for nine ten years it's just it's astounding mm -hmm. and uh, you know like I say if you and we have socials at the restaurant we're gonna have one in the fall with the uh, American Pitbull Federation we just had one at uh, Moorhead with uh, South of the Bully Rescue. So uh, it's just a good cause to get behind because these are sweet dogs, very misunderstood, which is why we put that on the back. Understanding the misunderstood. Nice. Because, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of times cooks are misunderstood, chefs, you know, because they're, they've got such awkwardly working minds that come up with all this stuff <laughs> you know I think their minds maybe work the same way and uh, you know it's just a great thing to get behind and we've got these shirts that I'm selling at Pinkies giving five dollars a piece to uh, the uh, south of the bully rescue so uh, that's where I know. got my dog so I mean yeah. it's a great rescue I'm almost speechless when I talk about my dog and it's funny because you oh, said yeah. they do me and they just that dog is like the most loving dog and I've always been a lab guy and, you know yeah, labs, me are, too. Me and too. labs are loving dogs but yeah. man this dog other than being a little boneheaded oh yeah which yeah. is great because they're they're obstinate and I don't mean that in a bad way it's just you know they've got their own little thing going on in their, in their heads and oh you never know when you're going to call them and they'll drag a tree limb I mean like a whole <laughs> tree limb in the house it's like wow okay yeah whatever they're, so. I mean they're fantastic so 
so you do the socials and then what else cool. you know are you doing Cook other pinkies of, well i don't know yeah i don't know uh, I, i've got plenty of other concepts in my brain we'll just have to see what happens i mean uh you know it really uh i guess it depends on what's if we can keep the west side growing the way it is uh you know i may like to put some other concept over there you never know Man, I've got to say, I've had an absolute blast sitting down. I mean, you and I, Me too, I, don't, I don't feel like we've really gotten caught up in the last five or so years anyways. It's, it's been a while. You know, I, I followed you knowing where you were. I just haven't been able to get over, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's... That's what happens. You, you get know, a, long, a little long in the tooth, a little gray in the beard, you know. Yep. <laughs> I'm sitting to, home and thinking, well, baby, I'm going to take you out to dinner one of these nights. And, after I nap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After, after my nap, ooh, ooh, and then we end up ordering in something, you know. So, awesome. I mean, you know how it goes. Yep. Well, Greg, thank you so much, man. Thank I look you, forward Mark. to seeing you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I yes, had a blast. Sir. Me too.